Hi, this is Sherry Veronica, and I have with me again today, Victor Callender. And we want to talk about the great divide in Barbados and how that 1%, I don't even think it's 5%, maybe just 1%, eating up all of the Barbadian pie. Victor, say hello to everyone. Hey, good afternoon, good day, <laughs> wherever you are in Barbados. Hope you and your families are all good. You can go right ahead. You can go right ahead. Well, yeah, we, you know, I saw a post from you, Sherry, on the cake um, uh, or the pie. And those who basically took most of the cake, if not all of it, who never contributed to the ingredients in the cake, but took all of it or the majority of the pieces of the cake. Well, I want to go into that by saying that that's caste-oriented. C-A-S-T. It's an Islamistic culture, and I use isms and put uh, Islamistic culture on so that people understand what I'm talking about across the board. Mm -hmm. And the Islamistic culture permits, based on caste orientation, for people in Barbados over the centuries to have taken from something that they never contributed to, namely those people who are in the five percentile or those who ascribe to the tendencies of persons in the five percentile. And I want to add to this because it's, I think it's, it's, it's significant from my perspective. I want to add to this that, you know, I beat up on Donville Ennis for what Donville Ennis did. But how many people before Donville Ennis who were lighter in complexion than Donville Ennis and who came from a so-called upper middle, middle class caste orientation did what Donville Ennis did, never were caught, and them and their children continue to be people who benefited from something that they never contributed to, Sherry. Mm -hmm. So it's easy on one hand to say one thing, but in retrospect, when you put it in perspective, there are a lot of people that have benefited, been the beneficiaries of um, projected caste-oriented systems, not from the standpoint of pigment in their skin primarily, but from the, the standpoint of who their family is or was, namely Mia Motley, right? She came from um, a, a family tree that built itself. I'm not taking that away from her, her grandfather or those before her, but the playing field can never be level, can never be level unless we are willing to accept that we came into privilege and once in privilege that we're able to find ways to evenly distribute the privilege that we have received. And until we are able to do that, we're just pissing in the wind it's like having an ashtray on a motorcycle it is a useless entity just meaningless psychobabble so until we're able to understand that the playing field right across the board needs to be level right and that family orientation alone or family um uh, uh, the family entitlement modus operandi that we've existed under we shouldn't be in the 21st century and beyond, if we want to level the playing field, then we just talk and talk. Mm -hmm. Because I am here to contend with anybody that Haiti, which has a caste-oriented system, projected caste-oriented system, stands a better chance of disqualifying its class and caste-oriented system than does Barbados. Because the entrenchment of the caste-oriented system in Barbados projected all the way through the 11-plus examination, all the way to households in Barbados, stands large. Mm -hmm. The caste-oriented system, Sherry Veronica, in Barbados is Barbados' obelisk. Yeah. It is Barbados' monument. Yeah. I it agree. is. I agree. I agree. And I've been talking about it a lot recently this week, I guess because of the Easter holiday. 
I've been talking about it a lot because you see in the paper, they throw it to you and your. I think that Barbadians have no shame. When, when there was probably a time when they did, but at this point, Barbadians have no shame. No shame. There's no shame to their game. None. And it will continue. Yeah, so in order to change the dynamic of where we are and who we are or what we are, we have to we have to make sure that we lay things out. We have to be able to speak truth. And that again is a difficult thing right across the world. Mm -hmm. But more especially my people, we need to be able to embrace it and to speak it and look within our own family trees and speak about our own truths. Because how we were able to amass wealth, some family tree, what they have had to do to amass wealth, two people, right, um, is really profound, mm -hmm. really profound. And if you did a, a thousand bad things and one good thing, depending on the level and the, 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 the gravity of that good thing, that may not enough be enough to wipe out the thousand bad things that you might have done. Mm -hmm. So I feel that when you look at the, that, the, uh, how the, the, the sociological makeup, and I'm not a sociologist by any stretch of anyone's imagination or my own, is, is, is really insidious, is insulting for people to think that the crumbs that they throw, the insults that they throw to the Guinea multitude is sufficient to keep them in line, right? Because if you look at it, we move from the plantocracy, from the plantation system, the slaveocracy, to to what? What do Barbadians as a whole have that represents fairness, that represents a dividing in its entirety of a, of a whole system that facilitates for the betterment across the board of all Barbadians, all Barbadians, period. Every system in Barbados that has been established over the years has been meant to promote lifestyles that, that favor those in the upper middle class, those who, um, through cronyism, can muster the might to get what they wanted for their families, mm -hmm. and everybody else has been the, the, playing the second fiddle, right. relatively speaking. Yeah. And that's that's an unfair system and an unjust system. Yeah. And I use Mia as and Mia's family not not to not to to put them down or to put them in some uh, situation that is different than anyone else but i've seen it in barbados i've seen i've felt it in the 21 years that i've lived in barbados i've felt that pressure um uh, of having to compete on a, on a street where there was no fairness i mean most Barbadians, most Barbadians start back at the 100-yard line. Most middle-class, upper-middle-class Barbadians start at the 60-yard line. They start there. How could you ever catch up to somebody that already has, you know, 60 yards, 60 meters ahead of you? How can you expect to win? You can't. Right. It's not possible. Right. You say both can even do that. So that's what Barbados, when it comes to the distribution of the pie, the pie of life is unfair, is unequitable, and it has been going on and on and on and on. The third, the judicial system in Barbados, the judicial system in Barbados is right for the mentioning. Mm -hmm. Because look at that, so look at the inequity. Um, look at the, the, the totality of unfairness in the judicial system in Barbados. Look at the, look at that. I mean, you will go after a person like Patrick King, 
for voicing an opinion against a credit union, right? But you have all these criminal politicians and other people walking around Barbados, criminal courtiers walking around Barbados doing unjust things. But you would go after a man who espouses a love for his country and his opinion, right? Not that I need to defend Patrick, but because he speaks well for himself, but those are the kinds of things that's going on in Barbados, and that's why the pie will never be equally shared in Barbados. And Mia, you need to come to reckoning on issues like that. Don't hide behind anything other than what you need to stand upon as far as truth is concerned relative to the the the, the uneven distribution of wealth in Barbados. And it's projectedly worse now because foreigners are coming into our country and saying to themselves that they have a more profound reason to be there than the rest of people living in Barbados who from birth till now have contributed to the ingredients in the pie that everyone else enjoys. That's the hypocrisy of it. And that's wrong, Mia Motley, as two left shoes. Wrong as two left shoes, period. Okay, well, thank you so very much, Victor. Thank you. I think that's what, is there anything more you want to say? No, I've said what I want to say, what I wanted to say, and I'm going to continue to say what I want to say, Good. because you know what, Barbados is not about Democrat, uh, the, the DLP or the BLP. You know what Barbados is about? It's about the people. I agree. It's about the guinea multitude. And as long as I've got a breath in my body, you know, I can love some policies of Mia Motley, and I can love some policies of Ronnie Yearwood, who, by the way, I think is doing an excellent job, an excellent job as 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 the president of the Democratic Labour Party and the old revamped system that wants to bring back a person like Verla de Pisa, who's never done anything, who can find a way out of a wet paper bag. Why bring her back into politics? Why is she even coming back? Why is she even relevant? Those are the things that Barbadians need to look at. Ronnie Yearwood is a young man with a future. Okay. And if we give him the chance to prove himself as a leader of the opposition or the Democratic Labour Party, I'm sure that he'll do quite well. Okay. And okay. that's all I've got to say. Thank, thank you so very much, Victor. This is Sherry Veronica. Yeah.